Hello guys, welcome back to SWS Boxing. Delighted to have on the channel Scott Murray. He's the boxing promoter um, and he's he's got a show on the um, Thursday, the 23rd of May. So um, a week tomorrow um, is his next show at the, the, um, the Canuck, is it the Canuck Centre? No, it's the Premier Suite in Canuck. Sorry, Premier Suite in Canuck. And um, yes, he's got three fights on the cards. Um, oh yes, pleasure getting you on, mate. Did I say that already? Okay, no, no, that's all. That's fine. Thank you. Um, yes, and um, you've got a three-fight card. Um, uh, who should we should we start with? Omar. Okay. Yeah. So, Omar um, is a fighter, fighter managed by John Pegg in Birmingham. Um, it's his it's his debut. Great light heavyweight. I think he'll probably lose a bit more weight and drop down to super middleweight. He's extremely tall for a, both a light heavyweight and a super middleweight. But it's his debut on our show next Thursday, the 23rd. And he's one of the those guys that's got a great character, fun to watch, he's exciting, and I think he's going to make uh, make it in the pro world. He's, he really is a good, a good watch, and he can fight as well. Did he have a big amateur career, do you know? Or... Not really, no. He didn't, have, he didn't have a fantastic amateur career, no. He was at Aston Boxing Club for a while and a couple of other amateur clubs. Um, but John Pegg, who trains and manages him, has really, really brought him on. He's exciting to watch he's, and, he, and he's, he's fun to watch as well. And he's, he's got a great character about him. Good guy. Will he be fighting in a four-rounder for his opening fight then? <laughs> yeah, just, yeah, just a four-rounder for this show. He... Um, yeah, it's, it's his first fight, um, and I think he'll do well. There's a good chance he can stop his opponent. We'll, we'll know the opponent's name by tomorrow. His last opponent pulled out, so we just going to get a replacement at the moment. Oh, good stuff. Um, yeah, you've got another uh, fight with Zach Evans. You do like, I've seen Zach's been on a few of your shows. He's fighting Conor Meanwell, who's a, a very good fighter who goes in the away corner but comes for a good tear-up. It, it does come with a good tear up, and I think it's a bit of a test for Zach. Um, Zach's a uh, great welterweight from Canada, uh, good lad, uh, an ex kickboxing champion, as well as an amateur boxing champion. A really good pedigree. Got through to the semi finals of the Haringey, and um, I think he, he's, he's going to be good. He fought on our last open show last month, uh, knocked his, stopped his kid in the second round. Knocks him down and the referee stopped the fight. He's exciting to watch. Um, and I think he's going to go a long way. You know, I think we'll have him fight for an English title later this year. He's certainly on the cards there to, to make a bit of a, an impact to the Midlands. You're keeping him quite active. Is that what you're trying to do with Zach? <coughs> well, yeah. Um, Zach's um, signed under us as a promotion deal. He's also signed with John Pegg as his manager. He's got a different trainer. Um, uh, yeah, and the idea is to keep them active. I think there's nothing worse than seeing fighters only having who are not world champions only having two or three fights a year. I really, I'm the old school type. I think fighters should, if they're up and coming and prospects, they should be having between four and six fights a year, and they've got to be busy. What did you make of Zach's last fight? I thought he was incredible. He came out non-stop. He's a strong puncher, and as I said, he he, he not the this kid down who hadn't been knocked down before and the uh, referee stopped the contest. He was in no fit condition to go ahead. Um, you know, a, a, a tough opponent from Bulgaria who came to, to, to beat Zach. You know, it wasn't just a walkover. It was a good fight. Was it Petr Alexandrov, that one? <laughs> it was, yeah. Um, who, um, who, who, who came, you know, who, who came for the win. He didn't come just as a journeyman. And uh, he didn't want to continue. Zach hit him that hard. Uh, he just wouldn't, didn't want to carry on. So, yeah, referee stopped the contest. Yeah. And, um, yeah, a little bit of a step up, as you said, against Connor Meanwell. <coughs> what do you know about Connor? Of course, it's a sort of 50-50 sort of record. But it's, um, he's a good opponent for him and he should be a good test. And Connor won't come to lie down. He'll come to win. I think you're right. Uh, I think it'd be great. It's a great test for Zach. Um, He's, uh, this kid's keen. It's another little bit of a step up for him. And, uh, but I think, 
you know, I think you'll see Zach stop him again. I think, you know, he's a strong kid. Um, all those years of kickboxing and the amateur boxing game as well, I think it's given him good, good, uh, good stead for the pro game. And he's now being fine tuned. And as I said, I think we can see Zach go a long way. Mm-hmm. Um, is that a six rounder or? <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, it's just a six rounder. Yeah. Yeah. And how many rounder. sixes is Zach going to have before maybe moving to an I, eight or you know take one fight at a time? Yeah, I think he'll probably have one or two more six rounders, and then we'll move him up, and then we'll look for an area title challenge for him at, at either Midlands or English title. So obviously, suddenly he's up to a ten rounder in it. So yeah. Be, uh, be interested. But I think he's got it. Really do. And he's he's a good guy as well. Uh, one of the nice guys in boxing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and you've got um, River Brooks <coughs> and Bent, uh, the ja uh, Jan Arden. Yeah, River. Uh, he's a bit of a veteran now, River. Still stylish. Looks good. Uh, nice comeback fight for him. I think... Um, I think he'll look good on the night. It's a six rounder again, um, and uh, John's trying to guide him back and get him back on top. But yeah, it, it, it's always a pleasure to watch River, and again, a great character of the sport um, yeah. who uh, who on the night can look great. You know, he, he's, he's, he's stylish, cool, and uh, yeah, I think he'll he'll come away with a good win on on next Thursday. Hopefully, mate. I mean, yeah. I mean, he's. If you look at the people he's for, and um, a former Midlands area champion, you know, former English uh, challenger, which I believe, you know, he, he was unlucky not to win the English. He put up a great fight against, you know. He was, yeah, you're very true. Very right, yeah. Yeah, I mean, the yeah. fighters he's lost to, Ammo, Hamza, Tyler Denny, and um, I forgot the other one. <coughs> <coughs> But, yeah. but yeah, he's he's been against the best. Um, uh, you know, he's lost against some good guys. And like you said, he's been unlucky in the past. But great to watch. And a great entertainer. Oh, yes. He, he is, he is. The other one was Kelly, but that was another close fight. But yeah, I think his last fight, he got a bit unlucky. I thought he nicked it just, but I think... Uh, it's it should be a big year for River to push on and hopefully try and get back into title contention. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right, and that's John Peg's uh, sole objective with, with uh, River to get him back on track. So, uh, so John's a great matchmaker, by the way, and manager. I'm sorry, yeah. I was going to say, yeah. do you work with John quite a lot then? Yeah, John. So John's our main matchmaker. John Matt is our matchmaker for all of our shows. And um, he's probably one of the busiest matchmakers in the country and certainly one of the busiest managers in the country. Based in Birmingham, and I can't remember how many, how many boxes he's got under his belt now, but it's a hell of a lot. And uh, very successful and passionate about what he does. Yes. Um, and is River fighting in a six-rounder, yeah? He is, yeah. Another six-rounder of a River. What do you and know about his me, opponent? Not a great deal. John's looked into him. I think he's tough. Come through a good fight. There's a chance River might stop him. There's, I think more likely they'll probably be on points. Mm. So it'll be a full six round fight. But, but let's see. Yeah. We will see indeed, mate. And fingers crossed. Three at home wins. Um, I know. Good night of boxing. Um, yeah. Talk about uh, that. Your um, well, the people who are. Well, your sort of special guests uh, that are coming on while well, helping. Okay, so for all of our Excelsior shows, um, the Excelsior Sporting Club, they're hosted by Steve Bunce, who everybody in the boxing world would know. Um, former super middleweight champion of the world, Richie Woodall, who's only from Telford. And our special host um, and guest for this show, who's been with us numerous times over the years, is Ray Boom Boom Mancini, uh, an international boxing hall of fame inductee, boxing legend, and uh, who's got an incredible life story. No one's ever seen his life story. Look up The Good Son, an incredible documentary film about Ray Mancini. And a good guy as well, a boxing historian, knows his stuff, great entertainer. 
and he likes to mix with the crowd as well. So yeah, it's, it's a hell of a good lineup. Uh, plus, you know, we're getting a few other celebrities there that come as guests, so it's it's nice. It's nice shows, you know. We'll have a few. I mean, celebrity uh, restaurant uh, chef Glyn Pennell has been a regular in the past. Uh, Anthony Kroll has been a regular, as well as the old boys like John H. Tracy, John Conti, um, Steve Collins. You know, the list could go on. Uh, and uh, we got a good uh, a good regular clientele that love their boxing in a very exclusive, um, fine dining evening with with incredibly good professional boxing. Yeah. Um, how good is it to have like people like uh, those people, you know, going to your shows? <clears throat> well, it's important because we're trying to set ourselves as something better than ordinary shows. And I think we're doing that. We set ourselves apart. We're just a little bit better. It's, as I said, black tie evening. A little bit of the higher stand, a little bit of class, and it's it's important to us that we get the best hosts of the evenings. And you can't get better than Steve Bunce and Richie Woodall as a duo. And mm. to add it with someone right like Ray Bay, Boom Boom Mancini, yeah, they could be hosting any world title show in the world. Um, and we're doing it in Staffordshire, which is just sets us apart. You know, we have got plans to hold, hold more shows in London, but um, but at the moment we're just staying keeping. Tightest stuff at the moment, but it's, like, it's good. Yes. Um, as you're like, would you say you're sort of new to the sort of promoting sort of scene? <laughs> um, okay. So, my background is I, I was an amateur boxer myself. Um, and over the years, we've hosted literally hundreds of shows with uh, sporting celebrities. And certainly, you could probably name any boxer in the world apart from Mike Tyson, who can't get in the country, and Muhammad Ali, we probably have every boxing superstar as a guest at our venue in Cannock over the last 20 or 26 years um, that, you can, that you can name. So if you name the Four Kings, we're the only venue in the UK, one of the few in the world, that have had marvellous Marvin Hagler, Sugar Ray Leonard, Roberta Duran and Tommy Hearns all at the same venue. The list could go on. So I'm not shy or new to promoting shows. I am new to promoting professional boxing. Uh, we started uh, a year and a half ago with the first Excelsior Sporting Club show. But prior to that, we've literally hosted hundreds of amateur shows at our venue at uh, Bar Sports Premier Suite in Cannock. So again, not, not new to boxing at all, but yet yeah, new to professional shows uh, and enjoying every step of the way. So it's good. Didn't you have Royston Barney Smith on an amateur show once? I'm sorry, sir, I lost you then. Did you have Royston Barney Smith on an amateur show? Or I don't know, possible. I mean, we've had hundreds, literally hundreds. I mean, Adam Azim fought on one of our shows before he turned pro. I don't think it was an official England Me Scotland show. Um, yeah, Delicious Ori fought on, on, on that show as well against the, uh, one of our heavyweights, Nick Campbell, who's the Scottish champion. And Nick's but Nick Campbell boxes on our show. So what happened with a good the possibility. Nick, sorry to interrupt. What happened with the Nick Campbell Jose uh Jose uh, fight? Okay, so happen? yeah, big big fight. You never know, he might get it on in the future. Jose oh. um didn't get his medicals in on time to the boxing board of control, and ultimately they wouldn't allow the fight. So um unfortunately down to Jose, Jose's misfortune of not being able to get his medicals in on time. Nick was ready, and I'm sure he would take the fight at uh, the drop of a hat in the future. Fingers crossed. Um, yeah, how many more sort of shows are you planning to uh, have this year? Um, um, excuse me, apart from August, there's a show every month at, um, at the Premier League in Cannes. Uh, and on top of that, we're looking at shows, dinner shows in London, uh, a couple of dinner shows in London uh, later this year. And possibly Birmingham as well. Uh, some bigger open shows in Birmingham. Yeah. So, at, what? Where are we? So at least six shows this year. But they're only small hall shows. They're nothing massive. And I think we'll be having a local area uh, title fights on those shows. Uh, but enjoying it, good quality shows with good pre presenters and quality fights. And that's the key for us. It's got a little bit of quality and. Um, and giving the crowd something, well, they've given the crowd their money's worth, really. Yeah. 
I mean, I see your um, you done an afternoon show on. I think it was Sunday in April. Um, yeah, and there was quite a few good fights on that. There's some great fights on that. Niall Farrell had a cracking fight with the Mexican uh, Garcia, um, an incredible six round. And non-stop. Cooper v. Um, and, Mikey uh, Biles. Yeah, Ali Cooper v. Mikey Biles, great fight. Uh, that was the fight. That was the show. Also, Zach Evans fought so. um, and um, a room Fias fought on it. The, the, the cruiserweight from Telford had a good fight, and also. Um, um, I've got a brain, brain moment then. So yeah, I'll, I'll come back to it in a second. But yeah, some great fights and uh, a great open show. And yeah, um, for people who were co- one, uh, who were uh, who were coming to your show next week, what time do the doors open and what time's the first fight? So we do, uh, um, it's high end. We do an initial um, wine tasting at the start and a drinks reception. And then uh, we do an introduction with Steve Bunce, Richie Woodall and Ray Boom Boom Mancini. Then we serve a five-course meal with wine. And then the boxing commences at nine o'clock. So doors open at six for the uh, wine tasting. So it's a whole evening. It's a great night. And not to forget, we raise money for a really worthwhile charity called Promised Dreams, which is for terminally ill children to achieve their dreams. And it's it's a really heartbreaking charity, but it, it, it's a, it's a very worthwhile one. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, before I let you go, is there anything else that you want to mention before I let you go? No, great to speak to you, Sam. Thanks for the interview. Thanks for giving me a call. Um, best of luck with your future interviews. And um, if you want, I'll uh, I'll give you a show later on. But Ray Boom Boom Mancini arrives to the UK on Tuesday next week. So if you want to do an interview with Ray, you'd be very welcome to, and I'll arrange that for you. And he's with us for the week. Oh, thank you, mate. I'd, I'd really appreciate that. And from me, mate, thank you for your time as always. And um, yeah, good luck with the show next week. All the best with it. You're welcome, Sam. Thank you. Thank you, mate. Bye. Bye.